Let's learn how to format cells based on another cell value with conditional formatting in Microsoft Excel. Welcome to other levels and we glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. So, it's relatively straightforward in Microsoft Excel to apply conditional formatting to a cell based on the value of that cell. What we're going to do is we're going to apply conditional formatting to some cells, based on the values in other cells. So let's just go ahead. Now what we're going to try to do is format this range based on the value of these cells. Okay, so as an example, what would be pretty straightforward is to format this status column based on the status column values. So, we would go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, equal to, and we would say, if the cell value is equal to completed, then apply whatever format you want. We're going to go with green and click OK. That is applying conditional formatting based on the value of those same cells. That's not what we're going to try to do here. What we want to do is apply conditional formatting to this entire range based on the values in the status column. To do that, we're going to use a different option. We're going to go to conditional formatting, new rule, and the key is to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And we're going to write a conditional formatting formula in this field. We're going to pick our format, and then we're going to click OK. But before we unpack this formula, we need to first understand formulas in general. A formula can return a calculated value, and we're probably used to that if we've been working in Excel for a while, like you know the sum, or average, or count. What we want to do is write a formula that returns a true or false value. If the formula returns true, then it will apply this format. If the formula returns false, it will not apply this format. So let's just kind of understand what this idea means. I can write a formula like equals, and I can say does a two cell equal two? And if I hit enter, the formula returns false. What if I said, does a two equal one? And I hit enter, then I get true. So this is an example of a formula that returns a true or false value, and that's what we're going to want to write our conditional formatting. So the other thing we have to be aware of is what happens if we fill a formula down. Okay, so as an example, does C2 equal the word completed? And I hit enter and I get false. Then I fill this formula down and we should see that this works. Let's check when I change some cells with word completed. So we got a true for the completed and we got bunch of falses for in progress. So this looks like it worked. What happens if I filled this formula to the right? Now we see there's some changes here in our formula results. When I filled that formula down, Excel took the liberty of rewriting my cell reference from C2 to C3 to C4 to C5, and that was exactly what we wanted. But when I filled this formula to the right, Excel took the liberty of changing my cell reference from C2 to D2. So what we're trying to do, is write one formula that can be filled down and to the right. That gives us the correct true or false values for this conditional formatting formula. In other words, we want all of these cells to point to C2. So let's take away all this, and all of this also, and let's go back and edit this. Let's talk about relative versus absolute references. C2 is a relative reference, that just means as we fill it down or right, Excel is going to take the liberty of updating the cell reference accordingly. If I want, I can lock down the column reference by putting a dollar sign in front of the column reference. This means, if I fill it right, Excel is not going to change C to D. I could also put a dollar sign in front of the two, that's going to lock down the row reference. That means if I were to fill this down, it's not going to change the row reference. Okay, as an example, if I hit enter and I fill this down, all of these are going to be C2. That's what I mean by an absolute reference. Excel is not going to rewrite that cell reference. And that's not exactly what we want. We really want as an absolute column reference. So as I fill right, Excel won't change the C, but a relative row reference. So that as I fill the formula down, it does change 2 to 3. So let's see what happens if I fill this down and then I fill this right. So what we have is all of these formulas are referencing column C, which is exactly what I want, and as I fill the rows down, 
They are updating to refer to the updated row. And this is exactly what I want. So imagine this. This is a formula that returns true or false. And this entire row is referencing column C. All of these are referencing column C. This is exactly the kind of formula we need to write in conditional formatting. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear this out. And let's select this range. And now let's apply conditional formatting. Conditional formatting. New rule. And let's go with use a formula. So here, what is the formula that we want to write? Well, the first thing to realize is that when we're writing a normal formula, in a cell that computes a cell value, we're writing the formula into the active cell. What's the active cell? Well, we look at this range, and we see that although there is an entire range selected, only one of these is the active cell. And that is C2. Okay, and so what we want to do is pretend that we're writing this formula into the active cell, into C2, and that becomes important when we are setting up the cell reference. So we want to say equals, we want to lock down that column reference with dollar sign, C2, equals, completed. Okay, if that formula returns true, then just pick whatever format we want. And click OK. And as we can see, we're using conditional formatting to format cells based on the value in another cell. So can we do multiple conditions? Yes, we can totally do multiple conditions. So let's cruise over here and let's try it again. So now we can string together as many conditions as we want. So does C2 equal completed, and is the score greater than 90? So is D2 greater than 90 and we could continue stringing along additional conditions if we want. So if that is true, in other words, if both of those conditions are true, then the AND function returns true. And by the way, if we wanted either of them to be true to get the formatting, then instead of AND, we would use OR. The way the OR works is if any of the arguments are true, then OR returns true. For AND, if all of the arguments are true, then AND returns true. So we click OK, and now we got it. Cool, so to recap, to use conditional formatting based on another cell, we need to use a conditional formatting formula. We're gonna pretend that we're writing this formula into the active cell, and that when we click OK, Excel is gonna fill that conditional formatting formula throughout the entire selected range. We're gonna write a formula that returns a true or false value. If it returns true, the format is applied. If it returns false, the format is not applied. And then we need to use our absolute or relative cell references, so that it continues to point at the desired column that we want it to look at. So that's your introduction to how to format cells based on another cell value with conditional formatting in Excel. It may look simple, but it can save you hours of manual cleaning and make your reports far more advanced. This was the second episode in our brand new series on Excel 2025's most important functions. Don't forget to visit our website other-levels.com to find the most powerful dashboard in the world. In the next videos, we'll continue exploring the other powerful updates, so make sure you subscribe to Other Levels and hit the notification bell, so you don't miss out. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments which of the new Excel 2025 functions would you like me to cover next. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of our Excel 2025 function series.